My name is Anas. Uh, I'm the CCO in uh, Dixa. We're actually sitting in this uh, fantastic house, uh, Founders House. Uh, unfortunately, we'll be moving tomorrow, but uh, we've been enjoying it so far. <laughs> we grew out. Yeah. Uh, so just a little bit sh short about Dixa. Uh, it was founded in uh, early 2015 uh, by three fantastic developers. Uh, me, myself, I was brought on board uh, in June 2016 when they basically moved out of a kitchen and into Founders House. Uh, and they brought me on board uh, because I know uh, some of this uh, commercial stuff. Uh, I'm one of these sales guys. So they asked me if I would like to join the team and uh, help them getting some uh, traction with the product that they didn't go to the market with yet. Uh, and we needed some final adjustments and stuff. But if I would like to join and I really wanted to join this team, I could see the potential for this business. Uh, uh, Dixa is a customer service platform. Uh, it's a customer service platform handling conversations cross channels. Uh, for customer facing teams, so for typically customer service departments uh, or other businesses that has a lot of inbound communications across different channels. Uh, so, oh, like this. So, before I actually go any further, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that this is not a legal advice on how you do things. Uh, because cold emailing, there's a lot of rules uh, in this regard. So there is different rules in all countries. So you, you really need to, 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 to read uh, the rules in each country. There is some good stuff here in this blog here, prospect.io slash blog, blah, blah, blah. I guess you will put out the presentations afterwards. But you can read a lot of it, uh, about it there. But it's different stuff and it's mostly about this opt-in, opt-out options. So uh, how easy is it actually to see where you're from, your address, your company address, etc. But I won't dig into that now. There's also a lot of, a lot of stuff about GDPR. Uh, and I think that is a, a potential uh, issue or problem for all of us. So uh, of course, just keep in mind that uh, this is uh, not legal advice I'm giving here. So you need to take into consideration that there's different legal stuff in each country that you need to, to, uh, to keep in mind. So. As I told you, I was brought on board uh, in Dixa uh, because uh, I was this kind of sales guy that, uh, that uh, could probably get some customers for this business. Uh, at that point, they uh, just got the first funding. It was not very much, but it was just enough to bring me on board. Uh, today, we, we just got funded by uh, Seed Capital and Prem Damgaard. We just received 11 million in funding, so now everything is much more funny than it was uh, a year ago. Uh, but as we just heard uh, right before, uh, the big problem is always getting leads. Not only leads, but getting warm leads. When you typically look at software as a service businesses, you will see that they are really good in actually uh, getting leads and doing sales. So moving things through the sales funnel, uh, uh, adding new salespeople to the team, and trying to scale their business uh, based upon salespeople. That's uh, typically what you see, and, and, and actually when we see in, in the landscape of tech business in Denmark, we are quite good at that. Uh, but what we are not that good at, and what would you typically see is a potential uh, problem or issue, is actually to get warm leads inside your funnel. And warm leads that is of course interested leads or interested prospects. So why is that so important? Well, it's much easier and the conversion rates, of course, will increase uh, drastically when you get warm leads and interested customers into your funnel. But when you start out, it's really difficult to get warm leads into your funnel without spending a tons of money. So you know today when you're looking at acquisition costs across software as a services, they are typically looking at something like between 12 and 15 months in, in a payback or 12 to 15 months in MRR for one customer. That's the price to get one customer. So if you are a startup, that's almost, uh, and that will always be, be a no-go. So I, I started out trying to figure out how can we do this cheaper so we can actually get some traction, not only in Denmark, but get traction uh, around the world. Uh, also important for us to get around the world was also so we could actually try to uh, engage with new or uh, with customers and our uh, target so we could see is that difference when we're reaching out to the same or this a specific company in Denmark in Norway in UK US Canada Australia uh, do they actually have different needs is that different value propositions in different countries so are we even starting in the right country 
And we found out that cold emailing was a really good way of trying this out. So the first thing we did was actually defining our target, of course. That's uh, important for everyone. Uh, we made our uh, own model here. We defined it by size. So we found out that, okay, we know that we want businesses that has between 20 and 40 people in their uh, uh, customer service department. So uh, between 20 and 40 agents, that is like uh, the perfect customer for us. And we also know that we want some customer that has a fairly high TRL or technology readiness level in order to adopt our product and actually understand what we are trying to sell them. And also in order to, to onboard them and not lose them on the way, then they have to have a high TRL. So we know TRL has to be high, they need to be fairly big. We found out then that when we look at businesses, we know that e-commerce is a, is a way to go for us. They have a high TRL, they have uh, technology already, they are they used to adopt <coughs> new technology, they also have potential integrations for us. So we know we want e-commerce businesses, and we also know that we can find out how many visitors they have. So we found out that 100,000 visitors on their website equals one customer service agent. So by, when finding this out, then we knew that with 20 agents, well, then that means that we need businesses with 2 million visitors, unique visitors on their website. You can find uh, uh, great systems uh, that can actually do this for you. You can just something like similar tech or similar web, uh, where you can both find the technology they're using and also see how many visitors they have. So we needed to prospect at first. So we needed to find the prospects. We did that from the software, as I just said. We knew that we wanted to go for e-commerce businesses. So we found out that on similar tech, we could make huge lists across areas and regions, countries, and also from size and visitors, or the size of the companies, we could find potential, uh, potential businesses where we could actually see, uh, make sure that we have the business type, their technology readiness level, and also make sure that our value proposition actually fits into this specific business. So from this, we got thousands of leads, but with no context. So that was a problem, right? So we have uh, 20,000 potential leads, but we don't have any contact persons. So we need to enrich this. So there's different systems out there that you can use to, en to enrich. There's something like Clearbit. Uh, many uh, companies are using this. You can also use LinkedIn. There's different crawlers you can use. You can also use a, a, a website like Upwork, uh, where they crowdsource work, where you can put up a task, and then you can find some people in India, Russia, whatever, and they can help you. We set up a small setup in, in the Philippines, uh, where we have people going through all these uh, email, or sorry, uh, prospect lists, and then they are adding contact persons to these. They do this from different titles. So we identified that we know that is, if it is below 200K monthly visitors, then we know that we need to reach the sea level because that will be the decision makers. There's always the decision makers taking uh, the decision whenever we're talking e-commerce business, if they are this small. They, they simply didn't uh, uh, hire any yet that, that takes this job. So then we know that from 200 credit to 1 million, we need to go for operations. That will typically be IT or an operations manager or some other title in operations. When we go below, or sorry, above 1 million, then we're looking at managers because then they had, have already hired managers to the specific position in this specific business unit, which is, of course, customer service. So we found out that when we are enriching this, we started out actually on Upwork, and we found out that we could enrich 60% of these leads. That gave us a total CP, uh, cost per lead, which was 19 cents. So that was actually a really good price for us. So of course, this was a little bit time consuming, but it was a really good price, and it was a very good way to start out. So now we needed to find out how to actually send this out. So we found this uh, system called QuickMail. We also use ActiveCampaign that was just talked about before, but we use that for other things as well. But this uh, uh, particular uh, system, which is QuickMail, it is exceptionally good in making cold emails because it makes this very important thing, which is drip emailing. And drip emailing is very important for you because if you send out 4,000 emails at one time, then you will of course be caught in spam filters and everything else and your domain will be blacklisted and then you're out of business. So make sure to choose a system which is a drip email system. 
And then also, when you do this, make sure that you use another domain that's your core domain. So we have, from the start, we bought a lot of domains that associates to Dixa, Dixa.io, Dixa.com, of course, Dixa.cloud, Dixa. yeah, all kinds of domains. So we actually use domains that, that refers to us, but it's not our .com domains. So this campaign here was not the first campaign uh, because I was, sorry, really too busy today to find it actually. So I, I just had to jump in and take a campaign that was sent out uh, a few weeks ago. So this is a, a campaign we just sent out, one of many. It had five steps. There was 476 uh, um, uh, prospects in the list. We had an open rate of 86, oh sorry, 68%. Uh, we had a click rate of 13%, reply rate of 11%, and no unsubscribers. When we look at this, then that is for anyone that looks at this will think that this is good numbers because this is cold outreach. They have never heard about us before. So we, of course, need to do things a little bit intelligently to actually get them to open the email. So if we just send something random, then they would never open this email. So that's the next thing. How do you actually make these emails? Because that is something that you need to trial and error uh, in, in order to actually uh, uh, hit the nail. It's, it's really important. But you can read a lot of best practices out there. Don't believe the most of them because they actually don't know what they're talking about. We tried some of them and it didn't work. So, so, so listen carefully here. <laughs> when you do this, it's really important when you have the title. The title has to be as short as possible because you always have to remember whenever somebody, they receive an email in the inbox, they're using a bunch of different email systems. And most often, or most often, they can only see four or five words of your email or of your subject line. So you need to make a title which is usually not more than seven or eight words and put the most important words in front. Then you also need to, of course, have some interesting content. That's obvious, right? But when you do this, you need to follow this. You need to create some trust, some initial trust. So when they read your subject line, then they need to see some trust in you. They don't know your brand. Maybe they don't know your brand. And if they don't know it, then you need to use something else that they know. You need to have some relevance inside the, the subject line as well. So the specific person that received these emails knows that, you, that this is targeted them because they are used to receiving a bunch of emails every day. Then you need to make it personal, and you, of course, need to have some kind of action. So when we look at this, we know here that we, we identified this list from Shopify. So we, we use similar tech. We found a lot of businesses that are using Shopify. We uh, narrowed in, so we have only the visitors or the size that we want to send out to, and then we make one list only for Shopify. So here we actually write, enhance your support with Shopify data. So when you're sitting as a customer service agent or manager or C-level or whatever, and you read this and, and you have your mind in customer service, then you will know that you are using Shopify. Of course you know that. And then you will probably initially think, wow, is this something coming from Shopify? And this is something about my customer data that I can use my Shopify customer data. Let me see what this is. And that is the first step that is actually to get them to open this one. Because if you look down your funnel and you look at the percentages, then everything that just falls crazy if you don't get that open rate. So, but what you can't do here is that you can't lie. You need to actually to, uh, to it, needs, it needs to match their expectations. So when they open it, it's okay to think, oh, that was smart. But they can't like look at it and say, that was not at all what they promised me in the shopping line especially not for customer service managers because they are a little bit touchy. So here we also use their name, we use their company name, and then of course there's an action. Yes, we recently started out to using, uh, using pictures as well. Uh, somehow it disappeared from our cold email campaigns, the pictures, and we wondered why uh, the campaigns were going down just a few percentages in the conversion. And we actually just found out that somehow the pictures, they were missing. I didn't see that, we just saw that the other day. So now our campaign has pictures again. It's a really good idea with pictures to make it personal. Yes, so actually the first two customers we got in Dixa was from cold emailing. So we got a company like Vital Choice in the US. I can't even remember where in the US they're based. But they're based in the US. They have like some eight or nine customer service agents. We got British Corner Shop in UK. 
which is also a quite big web shop. And we got customers from Australia, from New Zealand. We got some from South America. So we actually got all these conversations that we wanted. And also it made us able to actually put some stamps or some logos on our website that gave us an international touch as the first thing. And that was incredible because even though we only had 12 customers in our customer database, we had customers from all over the world. So that actually gave us an advantage when we were talking to others. So when we look at this, what does this give you actually? Or what is the result of this? Well, this campaign I just showed you, which was just a small Shopify campaign. We sent out 476 private emails. That was what they were able to enrich. In this one, they somehow they were only able to enrich 40%. So there was also some public emails. We, we don't get very good results on that. So, but we might as well send out to them when we have them. And that resulted in 11 demos that gave us five paying customers. So it gives us actually a cost per acquisition, which is $43. Yes, so that is a really low acquisition cost. So everyone that works in, in SaaS, they will know that this is a fantastic acquisition cost. What you should know, of course, is that there's a lot of time spent in this. Yes, I think that was 15 minutes, maybe, yeah. Yes, thank you.